Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the last speaker of the session, Franz Francesca Fedelev um, from the University of Leeds, who will talk on representation theory of supercluster algebras. Thank you. Thank you for organizing this very nice conference and for inviting me to speak. Uh, so I will talk about some work in progress um, work with Ilke Tsnatsky, Anna Garcia Altner, and Kristina Sergenko. Um, so before moving into supercluster algebras, let's just briefly recall something about cluster algebras. I'll be focusing on type A today. So cluster algebras were first introduced by Tomin and Zelensky, and they come with some initial data. So an initial cluster, so some initial cluster variables X and an initial quiver Q. And then from here, you can build this cluster variable, which are the rest of the generators of your cluster algebra through some um, recursive uh, construction. Um, there is a geometric model and a representation theory interpretation. So for type A, the geometric model consists of an N plus three gone, uh, which comes with some initial triangulation. And then the diagonals of this polygon correspond to the cluster variables. And if you look at the representation theory point of view, then you can look at the path algebra of type A over some algebraically closed field K, and then the decomposable K module correspond to the cluster variables. Um, these two interpretations are also very important because somehow they permit you to um, compute the cluster variables in a more direct way. So instead of going through this iterative process, which could be very complicated and time consuming, you can do it directly, either combinatorially using snake graphs, which are associated to the diagonals in your polygon, or homologically through CC maps, um, which are applied to your, in, to your indecomposable modules over Ka. So for example, if you look at A2, this corresponds to a pentagon with some initial triangulation, like the one here. And then you can look at one of the diagonals, like this gamma. You can build your snake graph of this, uh, where each tile, so each of these small squares, is actually obtained by gluing together two of the triangles in your triangulation. And then you can look at the perfect matchings of this snake graph, uh, which means uh, taking a collection of edges of the snake graph uh, so that each, um, each vertex is covered exactly once. So this is an example. And then for this snake graph, there are also two more. Uh, so you, you write down the lattice of these perfect matchings, you apply the snake graph formula, and you then recover your cluster variable. Or alternatively, you can look at the corresponding in the, in the compatible module, in this case, one, two, uh, look at its submodule lattice, which again consists of three submodules, and apply the CC map. And we'll see a bit more in detail this later. And then you recover the, exactly the same cluster variable. Uh, so starting from this, then there has been some interest in super cluster algebras and some attempts at uh, um, constructing them. So there is this work by Nishikar Hovenas and Zhang, which we started from, and this is um, of type A, um, and uh, it's, um, it describes some, it, 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 it's based on some work by Penner and Zaitling, which is for more uh, general surfaces and they study the created super technular spaces. So again, a, a super cluster algebra is now a super algebra, which only means a Z2 graded algebra, basically. And then for type A, uh, we have some initial data again. So an initial set of even variables, these axis cluster variables, uh, an initial set of odd variables, which are called mu invariants, and they are anti-commute, they anti-commute with each other and they commute with the even ones and then initial quiver Q. And then again, using some super autonomy relations, uh, you can build the super cluster variables or super lambda length, more specifically. Uh, the geometric model is again a polygon um, with an initial triangulation, which has to have no internal triangles and which has to be oriented this time. And then the diagonals, again, through some snake graph formula, correspond to the super cluster variable. Um, there was a lack of a representation theory point of view, and this is what our project aimed at completing the theory with. So again, if you look at A2, you again have this pentagon, but your triangulation is now oriented, and you have one extra variable, um, this theta, 
corresponding to each of the triangles in your triangulation. And these can also be ordered with some total positive ordering, which guarantees that um, if you multiply them uh, following this ordering, then your, your product is positive. Then you can build the snake graph exactly in the same way as before. And since the style corresponds to uh, gluing together two triangles, now you have also these theta. And then instead of looking at the perfect matchings, you look at double dimer covers, which are obtained by superimposing two perfect matchings. So you can actually have two copies of the same um, edge or just a single copy. And then you also obtain this uh, kind of cycles in your, in your snake graph. And if you have such a cycle, then you have to include in your snake graph formula, the first theta and the last theta that appear in the positive ordering. So applying this snake graph formula, which is very similar to the original one, you obtain your supercluster variable. So we wanted to give um, corresponding notion more in the representation theory point of view. So the first thing we did was to actually uh, find a candidate for our algebra. So we take the past algebra of type A and we tensor it with the, the algebra of dual numbers, so this algebra over here. There is this um, inclusion factor of mod KAN into this other module category, which takes a module and tensors it with the algebra of dual numbers, and we call these modules induced modules. And of course, over here, there are way more modules than the induced ones. And so if you look at A2 again, this corresponds to adding a loop at each vertex and these relations over here. Um, then uh, this is the Oslander writing cleaver of the original module category, and this is the Oslander writing cleaver of this new module category, where the colors are the induced modules, and each color corresponds to the corresponding uh, module in mod KA2. Um, then the CC map, the classic one, uh, as I was saying before, associates to each indecomposable KAN module its, com its corresponding cluster variable. Um, so uh, and this is the formula, it has a G vector and then uh, computes using all of the submodules of N. And this is some technical result. And then our super CC map actually starts with any induced module. So not all of the modules over here, but just the induced one. And it associates to each of these, its corresponding super cluster variable, super lambda length. The map is very similar to the original one, but uh, the main difference is, is that here you have a square root of your xi, and then we have this extra term, this mu n, which associates the correct mu invariance, so these thetas we were talking about before, uh, to each submodule. And this was the hardest part to figure out. Um, so let's talk a bit more about this mu n term. Um, we started by looking at the extended plastic category. So if you only look at the cluster category, it would be the fundamental domain would be these uh, five uh, objects here. We actually look at the extended one where you also have these objects corresponding to the edges of your polygon. Then each of the triangles in your triangulated polygon corresponds to one of these colored apps uh, in your AR quiver. And um, these are given by uh, putting together some sectional paths, actually. Uh, there is a way of describing the positive ordering just by looking at this colored path, and this coincides with the positive ordering by Musica et al. Um, and uh, actually, another thing I want to point out is that each of the objects in your classic category actually appears in exactly one, in exactly two of these um, colored paths. Uh, and then, if you look at a specific induced module, so for example, the induced one from one, two, uh, and then you look at every, uh, each one of these submodules, so for example, this N, um, you can, there is a way, which I'm not gonna go into details, uh, of associating a KA2 module uh, to this um, module over this other algebra. And actually, if N is already a module over KA2, then this is just, associating itself to it. And if n is an induced module, uh, it, um, fn is zero. But for, for this one, it's, um, it's one, the simple one. And then, uh, as I was saying, each object appears in two of these colored paths in this AL quiver. 
In this case, one appears in the blue and the green one. So we pick theta two and theta one, which are the corresponding mean invariants, and we multiply them in the positive order. So mu of n in this case is actually theta two, theta one, and this works for any um, submodule. Then um, the super C sigma component corresponding to this submodule. Well, this part is, is the same for each submodule, it's just outside the sum. Uh, and then uh, we use this formula to compute the, the component corresponding to n. And this uses this um, bilinear form depending on the dimensions of x spaces of simples, basically. And then this new n. So once you compute all of this, uh, this is uh, minus one and this is one. So you end up saying that the component corresponding to this submodule is this component here. And then we can actually uh, compare term by term our submodule lattice of these induced modules and the, um, and the lattice of snake grass double diamond covers from music air of an and junk. And we can actually see that the terms are the same term by term. So actually our super CC map gives us exactly the same super lambda length that were computed using the, um, the snake graph um, in their paper. So this is the main result we have. And thank you.